folks, the purpose of this very brief video is to explain the basic structure of your research paper and to explain the importance of each part um, and how those parts should fit together. Now, the title of a research paper is very, very important. <coughs> um, the title should completely reflect the entire content of your paper. Now, you'll remember and recall that the purpose of this paper is to inform and to educate and that what you're informing and educating your reader about are the causes and effects of your particular topic. Now for this essay here that I have as an example, um, the title is Getting Down and Dirty Sexual Exploitation in Hip Hop Music Videos May Have Gone Too Far. And what the student's paper was about was the sexual exploitation of women in hip hop videos. And what she does is she discusses in her paper the causes of this sexual exploitation and the possible effects of it and, and then questions whether or not, you know, uh, what's happened has gone too far in regard to the content of those videos. <coughs> so this title completely reflects the entire content of that particular paper. Now you'll notice that, you know, research paper titles are pretty long. They often include you know a colon so they are presenting several parts here a couple of different parts so just be sure that your title completely reflects the entire content of your paper what this title does is it sets up the expectation for your reader for what that reader is about to read and if the title doesn't adequately reflect what they're about to read well then you have a huge problem and then of course that would affect your grade so be sure that the title reflects the entire content of your paper the title should be probably one of the last things that you do write the paper first and understand what its content is before you try to write this now as far as the intro goes the intro is supposed to do some very very specific things um, the first sentence of your essay is extremely important. What it does is it sort of leads us into the topic. So you want to find a way to guide your reader into this topic very uh, smoothly. Um, and you might want to think about for yourself you know, what's the most interesting or surprising fact that you've discovered in your research and open with that somehow. Now. Do keep in mind though that in a research paper you really shouldn't have a lot of quotes in your intro. As a matter of fact I would say you really probably shouldn't have any at all and if you do it should just be a very very brief like fragment of a sentence that is actually quoted and not anything else. Um, quotes from other sources are details and those details belong in the body of the paper so an intro is a general overview of what you plan to discuss in the body. So lead us in with that most surprising or interesting fact. Then give us some brief background on your topic. Not a lot, just a brief general overview. And then provide us your thesis statement. Like what is it that, what is the main point that you plan to discuss in the paper? And then preview the main points. Now to do this, to preview the main points, you need to understand what each of your topic sentences are going to be in the body of your paper. So what I suggest that you do, as long as you understand what your thesis statement is, and you should if you've done an outline, is to write the body of your paper first. Then you can go back after you've completed the body and write the intro because it should be a preview of everything you say down in the body. So that title and intro are very important because they both set up the expectation for the reader of what your paper is going to be about. So for instance, um, you know, think of it this way. If you've ever like ha picked up a newspaper or a magazine or even looked at something online and you saw a title and then you know, if you began to read and let's say you saw this title in a newspaper or magazine you began to read and then the paper was about the red-winged Amazonian fruit fly um, I think you'd be a little upset and a little disappointed because you thought you were going to get this and then you got something else instead. Well, obviously, you can't do that in a paper. Um, this title and the intro must completely set up the expectation for the reader of what you're going to discuss in that body. If not, your essay doesn't have unity. Um, another important aspect of the intro that students forget a lot is um, this last 
portion here, this so what statement. Um, let's say you're writing about sex trafficking among young women in Malaysia. Um, what you're going to have to do is in that last part of your intro, you're going to have to make it relevant to me as your reader. Like, um, think of it this way. Why, why should your reader care about the sex trafficking of women in Malaysia? Most of them are Americans and they're living their little comfortable American lives and they're completely disconnected from anything that's happening in Malaysia. So what you're going to have to do is make it relevant to them. Make them care about the topic enough that they will decide to read further in your paper because if they don't make that connection in the intro they're probably not going to want to read further and turn the page or click the links to go to the next page, next page whatever the format might be so just remember you know after you do the lead-in you give some background you give your thesis statement you preview your main points you can't stop there you've got to make it relevant to the reader and make them understand why this topic is important and relevant to them. Okay, After you've previewed what your entire paper is going to be about in your title and in your intro, then you're going to have to create the body of your paper. Now the body of your paper is going to need to be as long as it needs to be uh, to come up with you know, five full pages minimum. So you're going to have as many topic sentences as you need to do that to reach that uh, page length. Um, so I just have, you know, f what five listed here, but that doesn't mean you're going to have five topic sentences. You're probably going to have many, many more than that. So just have enough that you can get five full pages minimum in your paper. Um, now let's discuss what a topic sentence does. A topic sentence is the first sentence of each paragraph. And what it does is it previews for your reader what that paragraph is going to be about, so keep that in mind. And then each of these topic sentences should clearly relate back to the thesis statement. Every single one of them should relate back to the thesis in some way and show us something about that statement that you've made in your intro. Every one must be connected. This is called unity as well. Now, as far as the paragraphs go, you have the first sentence of the paragraph that previews for your reader what that paragraph is going to be about, but then in that paragraph then you're going to provide examples and evidence and illustrations and data and studies, etc., 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 that are going to explain and reveal more about this topic sentence. So everything in the paragraph must be related to the topic sentence of that paragraph. And don't forget, and this is extremely important, after you've given us all these examples and illustrations, you must explain the connection to your thesis as well as to your other examples. Now, uh, this is where you're going to have to stop and use your own voice to make these connections, your own academic voice. And by that, what I mean is you're going to be using qualifiers to stop and make these connections with your reader. So don't forget you have to stop and explain you know, what the relevance of this info is that you're showing us. Um, when you give us an example, you can't just give an example and move on to something else and give it another example and uh, begin another paragraph. You have to stop and tell us why you just showed us this info, like what's important about it, what's relevant about it, and how is it connected back to your thesis statement. And you're going to have to do this for each one of the paragraphs that you write. Each paragraph should have a topic sentence, there should be examples and evidence and illustration studies, etc., that show us something about this topic sentence. And then you have to make, you know, what you've shown us relevant. Like why why is it important? Why are you showing it to us? And what are the connections between the ideas in this paragraph and the other paragraphs down here? Make all of those connections really, really clear. It's in the body of the paper that you're giving your reader all of the detailed information about the thesis. Details do not belong in the intro, and details do not belong in the conclusion. The details only belong in the body of the paper. Along those lines, you also need to remember that a conclusion is a conclusion, and you can't present any new information whatsoever in this final paragraph. In the final paragraph, all you're simply doing is you're summarizing all of the information that you've given us in the body of the paper. So you're summarizing all the main points and then you're going to restate the thesis 
that you stated in the intro. In this restatement though, it's essentially going to mean the same thing, but you're not going to use the exact same language. And again, what you have to do is leave us with the final thought, the so what, about why we should care about this topic and why it's relevant to us. Now, when I grade a paper, <clears throat> first thing I do is I look at the title so to see if the title actually does set up the expectation for the reader about what the paper is going to be about. Then I read the intro, and then I read the conclusion. And when I read the intro and the conclusion together, these two things should form one idea and one idea only. They're essentially mirror images of one another. You may have heard your professor in your speech class, in your public speaking class, say, <coughs> you know, sh um, tell your reader what you're going to show them, show them, and then tell them what you show, just showed them. That's essentially what you're doing in a research paper. You're doing the exact same thing. You're previewing in the title what you're going to discuss. In the intro, you give a complete preview of your entire paper in a little more detail than you do in the title. Then in the body, you give them the details about all the information you've previewed in the intro. Then at the conclusion, all you do is summarize all of the main ideas you presented in the body, and then you're restating your thesis. So the intro and the, and the conclusion, if you think of them as two puzzle pieces, they should snap together, they should fit together and form one idea and one idea only.